I'm Leslie Holt, and I'm an artist and the creator of Neuroblooms. I'm Con Christensen, I'm an artist and an educator. We are in my studio, which is Red Chair Studios on Cherokee Street. The community collaborative happens here on a regular basis. Community Collaborative was a response to the, the training that I had through the Community Arts Training Institute at the Regional Arts Commission in St. Louis. The project that was developed then um, became uh, a big part of Peter and Paul Community Services, which is an agency that serves people who are homeless or at risk of homelessness. Art is a way for people uh, in general, uh, but specifically people with mental health conditions or people who experience homelessness, to say, hey, I'm here. I'm part of the community. I've been marginalized, and I don't know if I ever had a voice, but I'm finding it now, and here's the story I want to tell. The Neurobloom's images are basically, they're based on PET scans of brains. Um, of people experiencing different mental health conditions. PET scan results look very different depending on the mental health condition that the person is experiencing. Um, and they're just a compelling, I, first I like them visually, I think they're pretty, but also they're a compelling way to start conversations about mental health. The tagline for Neurobloom's is making mental health conditions visible and beautiful. So the visibility is really key because it's not a visible condition. It's also not visible because there's a ton of stigma attached to it. So people don't want to talk about it. And it clearly had resonance from like people with mental health conditions to like social workers, psychiatrists, brain researchers, and um, they decide the message, you know, so their voice is sort of illuminated through this process. When I experienced not only the message of Neurobloom's, but the aesthetic of the work that she does that accompanies Neurobloom's, I said, this is very much in support of the way that, I, that I'm working. And I have a storefront space, and I think we should do a show. Then the public art component of, of displaying the um, Neurobloom's was proposed, and I said, well, yeah, I'll just send out some emails. Oh my gosh, the response that I got. Apparently, most people can support conversation about mental health. And I'm just really interested to see where it goes over the next couple months. Well, I hope as they're walking down the street, they catch, you know, somebody's eye and they notice there's a little information panel and they get curious and want to know, you know, there's a description of the pro uh, project and then there's a QR code that goes to my website specifically for this project. Um, so I'm hoping that they just get curious and want to dig deeper into it. This is a really great example of a community arts process that professionals um, introduce a, their influence into um, an area with an idea about a conversation and then letting go of the outcome to a certain extent is really necessary but then we're lucky enough to be able to document it and evaluate it and then see how other people might learn from or be encouraged to do similar projects. It's a leveling mechanism uh, everybody has some experience with some art at some time in their life. And so being able to say, I like that, I don't like that, what is that, why did you do that, can I help, can I do that, can you teach me to do that, can we do that together? Uh, before you know it, people have forgotten that they have differences. You know, if, the, if this said something about mental health conditions in big words, I don't think people would be as interested, right? So I think art has that capacity to lure people in and get curious. And that's, that's amazing to me.